Right, let's get to it. Essential guide to setting up the employee record and personnel file. Before we start, I just want to tell you briefly about OML Africa for those of you who are listening to my webinar for the first time. OML Africa is an HR management consultancy. We specialize in areas like HR, imperial outsourcing, talent assessments, advisory, strategy and OD, HR risk management, HR audits and for recent due diligence for mergers and acquisition, learning, training and development. These are some examples of the kinds of work we've been doing on the continent and also in Europe. We work across sectors in Ghana and Africa wide, as well as in Europe. A team of consultants with over 50 years experience. We have worked really hard to be able to fuse the local and international expertise, giving you the best in HR compliance and good practice. So if you're on the continent or in Europe and you are in Africa and you want some solutions to your human capital management, or in Africa, it's a fantastic place to come. Um, for us to help you find solutions and help you to solve your problems. So moving on, the service area that links into the topic I'm about to discuss with you is our HR data, uh, big data consulting, where we help you to look at your big data, structure it, um, build, put in the um, infrastructure to do analytics, um, security, etc. So this big data consultant can help you with your big data. Here we HMRS Consultant. This is where maybe you want to source in an HMRS, that's an HR software, an HR system, and you want to have an independent consultant help you to come up with what you need and then help you to source in the appropriate system independently. HR Analytics Consulting. If you, for example, we do a lot of it, a lot of analytics consulting on performance um, analytics. This is where people, um, companies have finished their HR, um, the usual annual appraisals, and the companies want an independent um, consultancy to look at their um, performance outcomes and tell them whether they've actually really been performing or just ticking boxes. So with this one, you would give us the appraisal information, the strategic objectives, etc., and then we will look at the information and feedback to you as to really what your performance looks like. HR data governance and management training for your HR team, including your IT, to understand the whole of the HR data and how to come up with a governance structure to manage the data and keep the data secure. Then, of course, a must-have for all HR practitioners is the HR data analysis and presenting, how you turn the data you're currently collecting into meaningful information through analysis and presenting the information to your management. From this workshop, you'll be able to develop a framework to go back and implement on your, in your company uh, to begin to do some analytics for your company. This is a course that's very practical. And if you're an HR manager or director where you want to get off uh, HR analytics um, moving very quickly, this is an ideal workshop for you. Okay, so this is summary of our professional training in Ghana and the UK. Human resource cybersecurity training is a very um, important one at the moment because cybersecurity security has become a very big issue. And it is an important factor for HR. HR can no longer believe that cybersecurity is the responsibility of the IT. We have a role to play because we also have HR data, payroll data, which sits with us, which all needs to be protected because there are sensitive information involved. So HR needs to think about ways in which it's going to mitigate, 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 uh, uh, make sure it, um, it reduces the risk, all right, the risk to cybersecurity within the organization. Uh, we can't not leave that just to the IT. So this cybersecurity workshop, we joined together with Delta 3. They come with the, security, the cybersecurity element. We're coming with the HR element to give you a really good full workshop that by the end of it, you would know practically uh, with tools, with examples, with templates, with guides on how to go back and address your cybersecurity issues within your organization. And then another area that we, we, we've got a really good consulting uh, workshop going is the non-for-profit HR data analytics strategy. Getting the non-for-profit to kind of look at their data in a more meaningful way and also to look at insights that can help them um, grow from strength to strength. So that's the non-for-profit HR data analytics strategy uh, workshop. If you're interested in any of these, of course, you can contact us. So let's move on to, to the webinar at hand, which is to look at how you set up your employee record and personal file. So this particular session is useful for you, whether you have an HR 
a department already where you've set up the employee records and personal files and whether if you're about to set it all up from start to finish um, you'll be able to use these um, guidelines to improve or to help you set up your employee records and personal files. We cannot talk about employee records and personal files without first looking at big data. Big data is a buzzword that's been going around for quite a while now and if it goes across functions within an organization. So H, um, HR has its big data, so does finance, marketing, so does um, sales, etc. And all of us have to come up with ways in which we're going to look at this voluminous data and convert it into useful information for decisions to be made um, in relation to our, whether it's our human capital, whether it's our sales or marketing department. So here I've defined it as an evolving term that describes any extremely large amounts of structured, semi-structured and unstructured data that has the potential to be converted for useful information. When we're talking about big data in HR, we're really talking about structured data. A lot of our data has been organized into formatted records, so things like Excel files, CSV files, databases, HMRS um, systems, and so on. All the data in there is usually structured. But however, we do deal with some unstructured data, so information that doesn't really fit into the conventional data models like Excel, but we still use. So things like Word, Excel, documents, emails, text, photos, voice messages, or voice notes etc or unstructured data that HR uses like we use voice and we handle disciplinary we may record the disciplinary etc semi-structured data which we use very little of but it has to be mentioned because it's all part of big data and it's unstructured data that has associated information such as metadata that makes amiable to processing e.g author create modify debate type key keywords really really we're talking about the internet um, um, as an example here also in going with the big data is the five V's, the five V's of big data. So we start with variety, which is the data source, okay? So data from multiple sources, mostly from structured sources, as I've mentioned before, for HR, so stretch sheets, legacy data, etc. And ASR, HR has an average of about 23 data collection systems, in, in, you know, for example, talent, recruitment, performance management, employee engagement. We have a lot of data collection systems. So our data is voluminous. And when we're looking at the big five, we have to also look at number two, which is veracity, which is really how accurate your data is, that your data is not fraudulent. So this really means that um, HR has to be making sure that it's keeping this data up to date. A lot of the time, we kind of expect our employees to kind of come and just automatically update us when the data has changed. I always say that you've got to be a, pro a proactive practitioner and make sure you are handing out the data capture every year minimum. Um, to ask people to refill the form and so that you can update information that has changed but they have not notified you. Or regularly communicate with employees to make sure they're giving you up-to-date information. But I don't think you can manage big data if you're not looking at your veracity in terms of how you keep your great data um, free, free of data, um, inaccurate information and also fraud. Volume. So volume is really about how huge the amount of data the data is. So we have a lot of data. Our data is huge. Um, and when we're talking about data, we talk about two types of information, internal information within the organization, so things like outputs to Excel, access, etc., and then external information coming into the organization. And this is really talking about, for example, job sources, e.g. our job boards, all right? Then we move on to number three, which is velocity. So how often the information is changed and updated is really, really important. I just mentioned that under veracity. New source of information. Information is not static. You shouldn't be, you should be updating it um, as um, it changes. So in EG, things like hiring, productivity, performance talk, um, scores are usually changing because we're doing annual appraisals, we're monitoring performance, we're hiring people throughout the year. But there are some data that become a bit stagnant if we don't prompt employees to update us. Things like personal information, you know, addresses, telephone numbers, and so on. And the last in the five is the value. So, you know, how useful and valuable is, is the information to your organization? And really, we're trying to, to bring it down to three things. How we can use the information to do predictive forecasts. How this information affects our revenue. And really, the types of analytics we can do to help us make better decisions. So this is the five B's of big data, all right? When we talk about big data, we're thinking about things like enterprise data, transactional data, social media activities that we generate, public data, archives, we can go on, it's huge. 
So now let's look at personal files in relation to this big data. So before we do that, we first must define what we mean by personal record and files. And here I've defined it as personal record and file is a paper or electronic, electronic sorry, folder for storing HR and payroll documents related to new, existing or past employees. Understanding what employment records to store in a secure personal record file helps you to avoid potential mistakes and fines in some countries. So, how do we set up our employee records and files, or how do we improve, we review to improve on it? Well, there are key, po key points for setup and, of course, review. Key point number one is that you need to know the data protection law for your country, and, and this is very important. Data protection has become a very, very important thing over the important aspect over the last um, few years. Most countries around the world have them, you need to know what yours says. Um, because failure to do so can, can result in lots of hefty fines um, for your company. And then you also need to understand the confidentiality privacy laws within the data protection and sometimes too they may be separate. It all depends on what country you're operating in. It's very, very important that you know this so that you can adhere to it. So if you set up your employee data and you really don't know what the data protection law says in, within your country, you should um, do all you can to make sure you engage with that, with that particular law. I know, for example, in Ghana, you're supposed to register with the Data Protection Agency if you're handling any form of information related to employees or your customers. So that's an example. UK has extensive um, uh, information in relation to data protection. It's, it's, very, it's, it's quite complex, so you really need to, for example, make sure if you're working from the UK, you know, and America and all other places, they all have data protection laws. Know your data protection laws in the country you're operating. You also need to know the laws about retention of records or if there are no laws in the country operating, what the guidelines in terms of practice are. But a lot of the time you will find there will be, especially for statutory requirements like income tax, pensions, uh, sick leave, terminations, payroll, there will be some guidelines on how long you keep records. It's good to know so that you know when to archive or when to destroy information so you don't end up with lots and lots of information that are data that you don't know. So retention records, and guidelines is very important information you should know and it should be part of your policy uh, your governance or uh, policy when you when you set up your HR governance and, and, and data management policies then we move on to actually setting up the files you need to separate the files from electronic and print files some people do both electronic and print others do print others just do electronic I say that in as far as possible, you want to bring it electronic, but there are some files you do need to keep in print. And if you do, they need to be in filing cabinets that are locked and secure, not opened and accessible to all. And, I, and if you're using electronic, you need to make sure that if you're using an HMRS, you have the levels of permissions and access. And if you're using Excel access or any other form of uh, modified databases, you need to make sure there are password protected for the electronic data. So within these files, you want to separate them into bio data and insensitive data. Bio data is literally capturing information around the employee's name, their contact details, etc. Sensitive data is looking at information around payrolls, so like things like bank accounts, social security numbers, immigration documents, payroll, medical record, equal opportunity information, etc. And these sensitive data should be kept separately from the main bio data. So if you're practicing a print copy, you need to have a separate filing cabinet for the sensitive data, which again needs to be locked with some security or, or, or um, SOP on accessing it. If you're also keeping it electronically, the electronic file needs to be password protected with a rule on access. Um, it's important not to keep sensitive data with bio data. Then once we've separated our files, we need to categorize the personal record into compulsory. This is what I must have, important, which is important to have, and then best practice, which is good to have. So for example, compulsory, you need to make sure you have all the employees' personal information um, on record, their name, their address, etc. And then what's important that you also need to make sure you have the next of kin that's important to have and if I even is a must have. Um, and um, also then you have the best practice good to have. So it'd be good to have, for example, interview, um, interview notes, for example, on the record in addition to the CVs and interview questions. So once you've done your categorization on compulsory important and best practice, 
you then need to look at, okay, how am I going to update my information if you already have your records and files in place or set it up if you're about to set up your records and files. So you conduct a personal file audit. So what do we have, what's missing? Um, if you're um, uh, having an, an existing uh, files and records or if you're about to set it up, then to do this, you need to create a data capture form to capture compulsory bio data in order to update or fill in missing gaps. Or if you're setting up the employee um, files now, you need that in order to help you set the records. Then you issue these data capture to employees to complete and return to HR with a deadline. And once they, input, they send it, you can now start inputting it into the system. If you're using HMRS, um, it's possible to input it into Excel and then upload it bulk into the system. Or if you're operating a self-service function, you could, you could maybe send the file the, initially the self-service allow them to log in and input the information and then afterwards you can minimize the access to information. So that's also an option. Decide on database governance structure and standards. It's very, very key to managing your, your employee files and records. And within this, you need to decide on a policy. This policy should include storage, access, security, and practice. How are we going to manage our HR data in terms of access and, and, and tracking um, security um, and so on? And also even how we update the information so we don't end up with um, inaccurate information in our system. Then you need to have an audit plan of your employee personal files, which should be done at least once a year by the HR and external consultant if you want to have a really good independent view on how you're doing or to be able for someone else to have an eye to see what the gaps are. And that's all email, we do do that. We can review your current personal records and files and tell you where you need to improve or how and what you need to do. We recommend using a secure cloud-based system for storing your employee personal files off, off site. Um, and if you're using print, you can look at digital archiving now. That's all better ways of saving your records. So you need to think about backing up your electronic off-site. So if anything happens to your on-site computers, you know you've got the data backed off somewhere in um, off-site. And then if you're using paper filing, you want to digitally archive them, and again, you can back them off off-site into the cloud. There's a lot of good cloud companies now that have very secure um, storage spaces. So you need to research and find out the appropriate one that would be good for your company to use. So now I want to give you some examples of what I've been saying just to, just to bring it home and also just to um, give people a visual of what we're talking about here. So your employee files, this would be your compulsory, your bio data setup. So you want to know the gender of the employee, the employee type, are they permanent, are they contracts, are they temporary staff? Um, the staff ID, so you, this, if you're using HMRS, it will generate it for you automatically. If you're using Excel or Access, you may have to manipulate it in order to generate it or create it yourself. You also want to make sure you have a national ID of the employee, at least one, whether it's a passport, a national uh, identification card, or a voter's ID, or a driver's license. Uh, whichever one, you need to have at least one photo national ID on record. So here you would put the passport number, but you'd have to, of course, you know, you would have to, the, if you're using HMRS, it allows you to take a picture of the employee and also you can have a scan copy of the passport. So it depends on what system you're using. If you're using Excel and Access, you may not have this option, um, but you could always create um, um, a folder to save those in. But I would recommend, of course, you know, I will, the HMRS system. So carrying on, then you want to put employees' last name, first name, their titles, their miss and miss or a miss or a mister, the prefix of their a dame or a chief, suffix of second or middle name, Janet. So you realize here yeah, everything's in full. There should be no abbreviations in names. You want to have fully completed columns, fully and um, spelled out names. And if you're operating prefix and suffix, you need to include them as well. Then we come on to um, other um, information that we need to have, which is the date of birth, the town of birth, the region of birth, the country of birth. This may not necessarily be useful to you, all of you, in, depending where you are, but I'm letting you know that this is how you, you can include all these um, columns in there. You may decide, actually, we don't really need to know the town or region of birth, but we do need to know the country of birth. That's all fine. It's just an example to, to, to give you a visual and for you to think about how to set your record up. 
marital status, nationality, and then if the person is registered disabled or not. Here, disabled disability information is sensitive, so we wouldn't really put the disability here. All you're trying to do is just know what, like, how many of your, your employees are disabled if you looked at your bio data. So here you just put yes or no, but the actual disability, you'll capture it in your sensitive data record. Then we want to talk about, we want to also add the organization name, the job title of the person, so they are a training manager, their grade is five, their grade step is three. If you're practicing a grading system, this is relevant. If you're not, you may not want to include that. The department is human resource, the division is administration, the unit is the learning and development, the section is training, and the region in which the job is based is great HR castle. You may not find out all this is necessary for your organization. Just select what you know that your organization will want to capture and you do so. But because I'm talking to different people from different parts of the world, I'm trying to um, capture it in full. So where it's relevant to you, you will keep and where it isn't, of course, you would not use. But this is meant to be just an example, just to help you. And then you've got the location um, of, the, of the role, the position level is major, middle management, top management, senior management, whatever your classifications are you'd put. You'd see here that I've put period time. This would, be, this would be useful to those of you watching who are from the public service. Some of the public service across the continent have different types of payroll or civil service, servants, um, for the police, for who, you know, they can, they can separate them. So if this is applicable to you, you would then select which payroll type the employee is on. If it's not, you don't need to include this in your setup. Assignment status, are they active or in, inactive? Assignment number, whether they're in a collective agreement, i.e. whether you have a union, if this person's a union member, if they say, if, um, if it's yes, you put, you may want to even add another column to put the class of worker, which should be on the collective certificate. You may want to add that there as well. And then the employee category, whether they're senior or junior. So if you have a union, if you're using the Simon status numbers, you would include. If you're not, you may not use that. Then we come on to the supervisor's name, um, the probation period, the effective date in terms of when they started, the probation period, when it will end, notice period, and then effective end day will be when the person leaves the company um, at some point. Now, or retires, or, or, or death, etc. you then put the effective end date. Now, I want to make a point that if you put the probation end date in the system, you can also set a reminder to remind you way before the end date for you to do your probation review, but you can either confirm or not confirm the employee at the end. A lot of the time, we keep missing the probation end, and then people just um, don't, don't know. And then what happens, particularly in Ghana, after six months, it is viewed in the law as the person that is automatically confirmed. So if you don't do it, then it creates a whole heap of issues. So if you put the end date, set a reminder to remind you that this is when it's ending, so you do the right thing. Then uh, we come on to the address of the employee, the city or town they're from, the region, the country. Um, the telephone number, you can see is two here. So you can have home telephone number, mobile telephone number, and then in some countries today, you operate the PO box address system. So if it's applicable, you can add it as part of your record. If it's not, you can remove it. Then we come on to the next of kings. You want to contact the contact details of the next of king, or some places we say emergency contact, or we use both. So whichever you're practicing, you want to include in your record. You want the name, the contact number, their address, and the relationship to the employee. So here, I put husband. And where you're capturing the children is where your benefits um, include the children. So maybe you're giving an education fund or grant, or the children, um, there's some kind of children, school fees, something. So, um, or, or there's the, the children are covered in the medical um, insurance of the employee. So you want to capture the number of children, their genders, their name, um, as eligibility and on record. So if this is applicable, you would add. If it's not, you wouldn't include. So that was just an example, just to give you a visual of the compulsory must-haves. You would have to depend on, uh, decide on other, other must-haves, but that I hope at least gave you some ideas. So in conclusion, I, want, I just want to say that, you know, the personal record and file is very, very important. It's very, very key that you set it up well systematically to make sure that you keep it up to date so that your information is accurate and you'll be able to run analytics on there. We've only looked at the bio data. Of course, we know there's much more information. It goes up to appraisals and so on. But I'm just trying to give you an insight into the actual records and files. So I've not really looked at those areas. 
So in conclusion, you need to know the law on the data protection for the country your business and organization is situated, very key, and also the retention rules there. You need to develop a data governance and management structure. You need to keep the data recording consistent by standardizing it. And I just showed you some example just now. You need to protect the data, you need to have a, a security policy. And then you need to really try to use an HMRS system um, or HRIS system to manage your data. It makes your life so much easier and it's just so much easier to run analytics or even export data to do further analysis on. I can't emphasize the, enough the importance of investing in HR software. So that is my summary of, um, you know, top tips on setting up your employee records and files. So just as a reminder of the linked services on the topic, and should you want any HR um, data um, consulting or HMS consulting or even the cybersecurity, you can um, contact us and we'll be more than happy to help you um, do that. You can also connect with us um, at OML Africa by emailing us at services at omlafrica.com. You can visit us our website. You can also connect with us on our social media hooks Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, um, Instagram, all there, we're there as well. And if you want to know what happened in this year's conference, you can also visit our HR Leaders um, website and you can find out more there. So at this point, I want to say thank you very much for your time and for listening. I really hope that um, these tips will help you to either review your employee record um, and files or to help you to set it up. Um, and it's very, very important that you do that. It's, it's key to building the foundation to uh, moving into analytics. And it's also key in, to making sure that we keep our employee records and files secure and up to date, being as a lot of the time we're using this data on a day-to-day -day basis. So if you want to connect with me um, on social hook, you can. I'm on LinkedIn, I'm very active on LinkedIn and Twitter. Um, you can connect to me on there or you can email me if you have any questions regarding this webinar um, or you can also call or visit our website to find out more about OML Africa. Uh, I want to take this opportunity to say thank you. I, see, I hope to see you at my next webinar uh, and I really do hope that you found some value in this uh, session. So on this note, I'd like to say thank you very much and look forward to sharing another insight on HR practice on the continent and beyond. Thank you very much. Goodbye.